very many warm welcomes to Dr. Paul, Holly, and Jackie. We were here at Holly and Holly to say hi to everyone. Yes, and, and Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I have one more. Ah, thank you. Who are from, uh, who come all the way from Arizona State University. Thank you. Uh, to come and address all of you. Uh, Dr. Poor is the uh, Assistant Dean for Admissions and Enrollment at the Harvard Institute for Design and Arts. Uh, with more than a decade of diverse experience in higher education, Dr. Poor has served as an Assistant Director for Student Recruitment, Admissions, at the Harvard Institute, the Assistant Director for the China Program at the W.P. Kai School of Business, and the Operations Manager for the ASU Dance Program, and the Lead Music Academic Advisor. Uh, Dr. Ho holds a doctorate in musical arts in piano performance from the State University of New York, Stony Brook. After finishing her bachelor's and master's in piano performance from the University of Michigan, uh, Dr. Ho received a Fulbright scholarship to the Czech Republic. She also holds a master's degree in business administration from the Arizona State University W.P. Carey School of Business. Now, uh, you know, before coming here, she and I and, and, and Holly and I teach from, from ASU, we had an interesting discussion and, and we talked about multiple ways in which we are planning to collaborate, right? Uh, including things like, we, we, we talked about things like progression programs and and you know, and, and especially in the area of artificial and virtual, uh, sorry, augmented and virtual realities, right? And so there's some exciting things that are going to come out, you know, a year or so down uh, down the line for our students here, right? Uh, just wanted to put that out there, so keep, keep your ears and eyes open. But Dr. Cole today is going to talk a little bit about uh, the Hillel Institute of, of Design and Arts, and. It was interesting when we were talking, the kind of synergies that were there would be how that institute imagined and, and, and setting up programs and the way we all have structured our programs. Right? So with that, I'm just going to give you a Thank you so much for having me here and all ASU colleagues. And it's so nice to be back in the classroom to see all of you. Again, my name is Sunny Quo, and uh, I'm here as part of the Arizona State University delegation in the sense so we're here to share some information relating to art and design. And um, I also want to share with you what other possibilities you may think about after you finish your undergraduate education here and what else you can do with your degree going on to advanced studies, whether it's at ASU or continue on, hopefully at ASU, but you know, developing a career that is centered around your undergraduate education. So before we start, um, I want to give you a quick overview of the Herbert Institute for Design and the Arts at Arizona State University. How many of you have visited Arizona or have heard of the Arizona, the state of Arizona in the United States? Great. Can someone tell me one thing about Arizona? There are many things you can tell me about Arizona. Just one. Raise your hand. Shout it out. Have you heard of the Grand Canyon? Yeah, that's the state of Arizona. Great. So we are the state of the Grand Canyon, and the Herbert Institute for Design and the Arts at ASU is part of the many academic units that Arizona State University offers. What we specialize in are the arts and design disciplines. Anything that relates to design architectural studies, architect architecture program, landscape architecture, industrial design, interior design, visual communication, those are all part of the design school. We also have visual arts related programs, uh, mostly around painting, drawing, photography, um, anything related to fine arts, fashion, and so on. And we also have performing arts programs, film production programs, and we have a very unique school called School of Arts, Media, and Engineering. That's where arts meet um, sciences. So students have a lot of possibilities to think about what they can do with their own creative passion, but then what else they can do focusing on interdisciplinary collaboration with students from other areas at Arizona State University. Right, so I will play a quick video so you get a sense of different possible ways you can pursue your education through the Herbert Institute, and then we'll dive into detail on the specific programs that may align with what you're studying here, all right? Um, quick numbers, 
the Herbert Institute has about 7,000 students. 80% of those 7,000 students are undergraduate students. In the context of how big it is, it's relevant to the size of St. Louis. So when you go home, Google, look up St. Louis in the United States, and you look at how many artists are practicing in St. Louis, that's the size of the Harvard Institute. And then we have five different schools within the Herbert Institute. I'm going to quiz you on that, so listen up. The first one is the design school, which houses the discipline that you're studying, architecture, probably landscape architecture, environmental design here, yeah. And then we have the School of Art. We have the Performing Arts School of Music and the Theater, the Sydney Poitier New American Film School, the School of Arts, Media, and Engineering. All five schools plus AHU Art Museum make up the Herbert Institute for Design the uh, Herbert Institute for Design the Arts. So remember those five schools. We're gonna quiz you on that afterwards. <laughs> Some of them are going to be rooted in the known 
um, degree programs. Some of them are going to be focusing on AR, VR technology, and we'll talk a little bit more about that because that's a very exciting venture at ASU Herbert Institute. So before we get right into it, earlier I already asked you um, about one fact about Arizona. There's another trivia uh, piece of information I'm going to share with you. Arizona economy is built on 5C. Can someone tell me what those 5Cs are? Don't look at your phone. I'm sorry, I'm so loud. I can, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, can I forego this? Okay, all right. I will use my theater voice. Can someone tell me what the five C's are when you think about Arizona? I'm sorry? Cacti. Cacti. Canyon. Canyon. So five C's? Ah, four, four, I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> All right, I, I gotta be nice to the camera person, cameraman, because we have a film major, we know how difficult the job is. So, kettle, copper, do you guys like oranges? Citrus, Citrus. cotton, <laughs> climate, okay? Construction, right. So with those ideas that you guys added, I think we, we're not just going to be five C's anymore. We're gonna be known for at least nine. Because we added construction, we added cacti, we added what? Canyon, and there's one more, chip. Did you know that Intel has a plant in Arizona? In my home country, Taiwan is going to have the Taiwanese me, uh, semiconductor manufacturing is also building a plant in Arizona. Arizona is one of the fastest growing states in the United States. Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the United States. It, continue, it continues to grow. I've been in Phoenix for 60, 16 years. I have not seen as much construction as I've seen now around our campus. And so, what does that mean to you? When things are thriving, economy is booming, what does that mean to you? These are a robust professional community around the campus that supports students graduating from that university. There are different kinds of internship opportunities that you can have that align with your discipline. There are different kinds of mentoring opportunities career options, needs for design talents. Because the city is growing, all those demands will continue to grow with it. Of course, in the last few years, we have this thing called pandemic. We were a little concerned about that, but it turns out that has not stopped us. So I think by the time you graduate with your undergraduate degree, you're going to actually come into a really phenomenal state at Arizona State University and also the Herbert Green Institute for Design the Arts. So remember those five C. At least you need to remember five C because I may quiz you on that too. So don't fall asleep on that. Arizona State University, a, a few quick facts. And I, I hope my colleagues from ASU can also chime in. ASU has many campuses. So you can see them here. I'm not going to read them. Um, we are one university at many places. Students can take classes at any of those campuses if they are offered. Some programs, like the Herbert Institute for Designing Arts, our programs are mainly based on the Tempe campus, which has this uh, university college-like feel. We also have programs at our Phoenix downtown campus. This coming, well actually this, this fall, we also opened a new facility near the Tempe campus, about 15 minutes, really 15 minutes, uh, from our Tempe campus, there's a new facility, Mix Center in Mesa. All together, in addition to that, we have a new location in California, our California college. So, Perfect Institute has grown from only programs at the Tempe campus, now at multiple places. ASU is known for its number one, the US, uh, number one for innovation. What does that mean for our arts and design world? That means the curricular that we're offering to our students are kind of are different from what you would think traditional. 
We also try to adapt to the changes that are around us. So not only will you be working on real world, uh, real world problems in your studios, solving problems with students from different disciplines, you are also trying to um, increase your employability through different kind of professional opportunities that you can have through our arts and design programs at ASU. Here is just a few uh, rankings that show, that highlight our programs um, at ASU. There are definitely more. The thing about arts and design is that not all arts and design programs are rankable, but the ones that you see that are related to design, you can see we're top, on the top. So that's a little bit about ASU that I want to go into. I want to come back to talk a little bit more about the Burberry Institute, and that's really where my home base is. So this is a quiz, right? Five school, 7,000 students. But today, I only want to focus on the design school and then a little bit about the School of Arts, Media, and Engineering. And then we'll talk a little bit about the new facilities that ASU offers. This is a quick aerial view of the Tempe campus. This is where students actually will be taking their transportation. And you know, one thing I want to share with you that I just learned is that Arizona is in, located in the Sonoran Desert. It is actually what uh, the most uh, diverse ecological system in terms of the desert, right? So it looks, it doesn't look like a desert right now, right? It's, it's an oasis. So there are issues that, that students have to start thinking about, especially if you're in the landscape architecture program. If you look at this picture, you wouldn't think we're in, in the desert. So what are the issues related to desert? Water scarcity. Climate. Right? How that influences the community services, how that influences the resources that students or community members have access to. All those climate elements, it may not seem like there are problems for this community, but it's this picture, I'm gonna not use the microphone if it's talking about the design school uh, more and so we'll jump right into that. So the design school as part of the Herberger Institute is one of the largest design school in the country, in the United States. And we offer many similar programs that you have here. So we have the architecture program, landscape architecture, industrial design, interior design, visual communication. Those are the five studios that we have. But in addition to that, at the graduate level, we have urban design. And then we have masters of science relating to these disciplines. We're kind of going to talk a little bit about those pathways uh, in a little bit. I've been talking a little bit about our students working on real life challenges. So let me show you a few examples of what students would work on in their studios. This is an example of a um, student's uh, studio project. It's a study of a uh, social justice uh, classroom space. So students actually work on the design analysis and the design of this space if they were to uh, build a building on campus, on ASU campus. So this is one of the school projects that students work on. This is another project that um, our landscape architecture students work on that are related to community. Right? It's another kind of a, a uh, community-based learning program for our, our landscape architecture students. So this particular project showcases our students working with um, school students and, and build a, a green environment so that it brings awareness to health, 
it brings awareness to social equity, utilizing the green space outside of their classroom. So how do they design this external space to help students to have access to this external environment, something that um, our students have focused on in this group, and they submitted for a competition and won, actually. Now, this is another example of what our students worked on in our interior design program at the master's level, we call interior architecture. And so a lot of our interior architecture programs focus on commercial retail spaces, especially at the graduate level, that's pretty much their concentration. At the undergraduate level, they have to actually work on various, you know, not just focus on commercial space, residential uh, spaces as well. Right, this is another example of how our students continue to work with our community members to address some of the real world issues. In this case, it's the study of artificial lighting. Now, before we get into that, the, why am I showing you all those examples of what our students work on? I know you probably have those assignments as well. But the thing is, repeatedly, you're seeing our students continue to look within their own practice and see how they can apply to the community that are directly connected to. Whatever the issues are, there's a need for designers. So how can you make your skill sets, make your training relevant from this moment and for as long as possible? It's really something I want you to think about, not just for your overall career development, but it is really thinking about how you can continue to sustain your design interests and actually make a fulfilling life around it. So uh, let's continue to look at a few examples of how our students are collaborating with our faculty um, on various um, design related projects. This is an example of, uh, on the right hand side, is a research led by our faculty, joined by our graduate students on the um, desert environment and studying of how the escalating heat impacts the plants that are specifically in the, the desert environment. And um, the faculty that's leading this particular project also runs a studio called HydroLab. So it is really about the studying of the water resource, especially in this desert environment. On the left hand side, or your right hand side, is a project that has been running for years in Phoenix, is to look at how we can turn our building roofs into another green energy generating space. The next sec uh, section of examples I want to share with you are some of the service learning studio projects that students work on. Again, if you think about what students need to do in addition to their design discipline when they're working on these projects. So for example, this is an example of our landscape architecture students go to, going to Hawaii, working with the community members there, um, addressing some of the external um, use, space usage. Um, so students not only need to know about the specific climate in Hawaii, but they also need to understand how people there live their life, right? It's no longer just about their own technical training. It's about human-centered experiences. It's about connecting with the people. It's about understanding their needs and their challenges. On the left-hand side is another example of how our students are connecting with the community members. In this case, it's in Phoenix. And so in this particular project, our students bring together residents that are in South Phoenix and helping them to understand some of the design challenges that the community members have, are facing so that it's not just a one-way street of thinking. As a designer, you are always thinking about, you know this, you're always thinking about how to meet your client's needs, how to work with your clients while being able to present your ideas as designers, right? If that's something you continue to work on. But in this particular case, we continue in that process, even though, you know, you could have just stayed in the studio and just come up with a set of problem solving uh, uh, recommendations. But in this particular case, we actually take our solutions and go into um, our community members and run some scenarios um, as well. 
A few more examples, we already talked a little bit about the roof project, the living roof project. And so this particular, this is a closer shot of it. So students actually take this opportunity to study the plants as well as in the uh, irrigation and how, how to um, choose certain uh, plants that are more suitable for the desert climate and for green sustainable uh, solutions. This is another example from our interior design program. Students work on building houses for folks who need more homes or need their, uh, need their homes renovated. And so this is a, a most recent example from our visual communication design. Visual communication design is graphic design at the undergraduate level and then at the graduate level we call, them, uh, call it visual communication design. So this is a, our students taking their skill sets to the community uh, to help bring awareness to the Ukraine war and then resident refugees that are coming to Phoenix. So, and then last but not least, this is an example of industrial design students working with students from kindergarten to eighth grade on um, building uh, objects to help them to learn about STEM. So STEM stands for science, I'm not gonna put you on this. Science, technology, engineering, Map, right? So um, it's to use different kind of a design principles, different objects to help students, to, uh, little kids to stay engaged. So that's another way to engage, you know, uh, with your design training. I say last but not least, I lied. So one most important one, architecture. Uh, many of you here are architecture students. So this is a project that our students worked on designing outdoor classrooms. This is during the pandemic that became very relevant in the time and the space that we were in, especially in the last few years. So um, before we continue, so again, just to summarize, just to give you a sense of how broad, how many options you can have with your particular dis uh, design practice. The next set of uh, examples I want to share with you now is more of a advanced options, right? In your, after you graduate from here, you may be thinking about going to grad school, but what if you don't just go for one graduate degree? What if you think about a combination that works for you, helps you to stand out as an architect? So in this particular case, Nate actually uh, pursued a Master's of Architecture degree and then added a biomimicry uh, certificate while he was at ASU. Biomimicry is about studying the natural plants, the, the, the structure of natural plants, and use that as the inspiration for your design materials and overall uh, design. A perfect example um, at ASU, ASU has a building that just opened this fall, sorry, this past spring. And so exter the exterior uh, pattern was based on the pattern of the cactus. So how cactus is, be, uh, is able to, if you, how many of you have seen cactus? The big ones, some, the sonoral cactus, great, thank you so much. And if you study the, the skin of the cactus, it actually is not all smooth. It has a way to block the sun as well as to, um, contain the water and so keep the plant itself cool. So we use that kind of principle to design the exterior of the building to reduce the heat, right? To, to, to help us to lower the overall, um, the heat uh, that the building generate and also block off the sun that is beating on the building. So I thought that was very fascinating. So really biomimicry is about studying different kind of bi uh, objects that we see in nature and use that as an inspiration. So we're looking forward to seeing what Nate can come up with with, not, with this type of a combination. Um, Namita, she also continued in our Master of Architecture program, but then she added on an urban design graduate degree when she was at ASU. Now she's working in Boston designing campus buildings specifically. I used her as an example earlier. So those 
Now you are seeing this pattern, right? Students are starting to branch out. We also have a design program that helps students to look at the intersection of engineering, business, and design. And this is a very unique program, really, uh, because what our faculty has gathered from a lot of industry partners is that students, after they graduate, they don't really know how to talk to each other. Engineers don't understand the business concepts. Designers don't understand how engineers or business uh, people think. So our faculty want to put together a joint degree program that allows students to start practicing how to work with each other while they're in the degree program. It's not just the concurrent degree that you saw earlier. It's not just focused on the studio project. It's actually coming together, bringing three different schools at ASU. This is a transdisciplinary example. So how can we help students understand how to work with each other while helping them to develop their venture idea so that they can bring to the market and scale it? So students need to learn how to identify the problem, build a prototype, and then test it and then they get feedback, and then test again, and then uh, roll out to the market, right? So we have, actually in the program, we have students coming to us from education backgrounds. We have a winery owner coming to this program wanting to figure out how to build a consortium, so how other winery owners to be able to sustain their business. So there are different kinds of people coming into this program thinking, uh, what they can do, utilizing the combination of design, engineering, and business to help them to uh, expand what they're passionate about. So this is an example, and I will play you a video right now just to capture the essence of this particular degree. So give me a second. No, it's okay. We'll come back to that because I don't want to waste everybody's time here. Don't worry, it's my. We'll figure it out. So, uh, MSIBD is one is that joint degree that I was talking about, bringing together engineering and uh, business and design. We'll come back and look at those options. So, with that said, I covered all the possibilities that the design school can offer. Let me give you a quick summary of what those degree options are so you can actually take out your phone and scan the QR code if you wanted to do that so that um, you keep it in the back of your mind and then when it's time for you to apply to college, uh, apply to grad program, you can think about ASU, the design school options. Okay, we went over some of the examples in the architecture program landscape interior design. Uh, industrial design, innovation, venture development was that joint um, degree program that I mentioned, and then visual communication. So on the screen, you will see some of the programs that are with the asterisks next to them. Those are STAM designated programs. STAM allow the STAM designation allows our international students being able to extend their uh, optional practical training after they graduate with a degree to uh, extend 24, month, 24 more months. So originally students can get 12 months of OPT. Because of the STEM designation, they can have 36 months altogether. So that allows you to have the opportunity to uh, find some work opportunities after you graduate from a U.S. institution if you wanted to do that. So within the design school, it offers these classic pathways for students coming with undergraduate programs that are similar to these graduate programs. So if you are interested in that, please um, feel free to scan the QR code. And if you want to see more examples of our student projects, you can go on to any of those sites that you see on the screen so you can see more examples about how our students are working on different kind of transdisciplinary projects that help them to stay connected, stay engaged with the community that they serve. The next one I want to talk a little bit about, and so this one we can play the video because 
I am better than Hello everybody, welcome to the School of Ops Media and Engineering, where Ops means engineering means humanities. I am Paolo Gerardo, the director of the School of Ops Media Engineering, and I'm really looking forward to welcoming you all. So what happens out here in the School of Ops Media Engineering? We are a collective of engineers, artists, humanists. Uh, we tend to think about building skill sets in three different ways. One is developing technologies, developing skill sets in the latest and greatest technologies, including AR, VR, artificial intelligence, building circuits, prototyping, all that stuff. We think about applying them to make media arts, installations, experiences, room scale work, all that stuff. We think about impact and implication. Who is this benefit? Who is being left out? What is the impact on the environment, on society, on human well-being and happiness? So the mixture of all these three is what is the School of Arts, Media and Engineering. There is nearly nothing that you cannot do through things like games and interactive media, location-based experiences, media ethics, AI-based art, and also physical prototyping. So please reach out to me, email me, call me, walk into my office. I'm almost always available to meet students. Thank you so much. The reason I want to share this video with you is come on, uh, Professor Joraga was actually going to join us in this trip. And Professor Chiraga actually was a, a, his undergraduate training was in engineering, but now he's interested in working with immersive media and utilizing uh, media technology to advance his um, research focuses. So Professor Chiraga is the director of the School of Arts, Media, and Engineering. That's the school that brings program uh, for arts, meeting sciences, right? And meeting sciences and engineering. So many of the programs that um, this particular school offers is deeply rooted in transdisciplinary principles. So this is a quick slide showcasing. There's so much you can see on this particular slide. But really, his primary focus is how to address real life challenges through data analysis, computing, and interactive media. And so, Many of the faculty that work in this particular school all come from engineering background, but then they also have strong interest in, in, in design practices. Professor Robert Lee Kwamwa is our guru in XR VR technology. He is the one leading our Dreamscape um, project at ASU. Dreamscape is the leading company that focuses in on utilizing uh, augmented reality technology to uh, for educational purposes. So what that means is that you can actually map real life object or uh, object into a um, VR experience. So essentially you can actually, if you're in that pod, you can touch the dinosaur with wearing the Oculus goggle. And so that helps students to learn about dinosaurs in that case. Or if you can utilize that kind of a learning environment for many purposes, right? You may not be able to travel around the world to learn about different cultures. But with that dreamscape opportunity, students can be in that immersive environment and experience different parts of the world without having to travel afar. So this is what now we're taking the ideas of designing something but combining with different advanced technology and see how we can help us as the end users to expand the way uh, we imagine the world. So, Lee Kwamwa is, uh, Professor Lee Kwamwa is our leading faculty on Dreamscape and AR VR experiences. Uh, Professor Arian Meadow is our leading sci scientist and engineer on climate studies, right? This is her focus area. She also teaches in the School of Arts, Media, and Engineering. It's a little bit further away from the idea of arts, but she's utilizing her research focus on studying how does urban form, design, and landscaping impact heat and the human experience of heat in cities. Imagine how relevant that is in Phoenix, in the middle of the Sonoran Desert. So that's her research focus. Now, this particular project by Professor Payne, Professor Payne is a trained classical musician from New Zealand, but he developed a sound project. So he and his research partner 
they started in collecting different kind of bird sound in the Sonoran Desert. And they spent days out in the desert camping and so on. And they collect all the sound and bring back to his lab and analyze the sound wave. How closely related to classical music do you think that is? Not very, right? But his ability to listen to the different kind of variants in the sound wave help him to identify the changes that are happening in the environment. It helps the research team to determine how the urban development has impacted the natural environment, which then impact the sound the birds are making. Isn't that fascinating? As a side product of this project, he, he and his team also developed a different set of recording microphones so that they can give out those microphones to volunteers to help them to collect more samples, collect more data, to do more in-depth analysis. Because of that, they developed a, a, a less expensive set of mi microphones compared to what they originally started. This all came from his music training, but his also his interest in sound and utilizing data. And then how to combine those areas to help them to look at some real life issues that are very relevant to our day-to-day uh, -day living. One more example about arts media engineering faculty, what they're doing. So Kimberly Swisher is also a trained musician, but then she's now very focused on um, training younger generation, being more interested in computer coding and computer science related discipline. So she's more focused on K-12 education related to digital culture. And, but she started off as an undergraduate music student. In fact, I advised her when she first started as a freshman. Now she's our faculty at the School of Arts and Media and Engineering. So why am I showing you all those possibilities? Because I want to tell you, just because you're studying one particular thing, it doesn't mean that that's going to set your future path. I hope you start thinking, I hope you don't stay comfortable in the degree that you're in. I hope you continue that thirst and try to learn more about different subjects that you're interested in instead of just staying on this traditional path you think you are on. Yeah? All right, so a quick summary of the options that are available in the School of Arts, Media, Engineering, especially at the graduate level. So the Master of Science in Digital Culture is part of the School of Arts, Media, and Engineering offering. It is also stamp designated, so it allows you to have additional uh, time to stay um, for career related opportunities after you graduate with a degree. And then this school also has a PhD option. So for those of you who are planning far ahead, uh, this PhD option is actually a joint degree with uh, between the School of Arts, Media and Engineering and ASU's Engineering School. ASU actually has a school that just focuses on engineering related programs. Before we leave School of Arts, Media, and Engineering, I just want to do a quick plug. This is also the school that houses one of the coolest programs, hottest programs at ASU, eSports. How many of you have played games? Oh, how many of you like eSports related games? This is open to our students, and um, we started last year during the pandemic. Um, our hope is to expand this particular resource and then we can actually help students to understand how you can use game design, how you can develop games to help addressing different sets of real life issues. For example, you can use games to help students learn better. You can use game design, you can use um, games to help students to, or help people to bring the distance closer. Different ways to bring the community together through gaming. So, even though really that has nothing to do with graduate program, I just want to do a quick plug. Esports it brings the whole world to school of arts, media, and engineering. So we will go into some of the other examples that are related to performing arts. But I just want to show you at ASU Harbor Institute for Design and the Arts. It is really to help students to imagine the intersection possible, the possibilities that are happening at the intersection of different disciplines. 
The next thing I want to share with you are some of the newer programs that Herbert Institute is offering, and this is really where the AR VR experiences are going to be uh, focused on. So this uh, this fall, we started our new cohort in the Master of Arts Media, uh, Master of Arts in Narrative and Emerging Media at our California Center. So, and I'll play you a promo video after this. So we'll play all the videos at the end, that way we don't have to go back and forth. So this particular program is a joint degree program between uh, the College of Arts and Design and Cronkite Journalism School and Mass Communication. So this is about utilizing AR, VR experiences for digital storytelling. Right? If you're interested more about using journalistic um, output combining with digital technology, particularly in VR, AR experiences, this is a program for you. This is also a wonderful program if you're interested in working in the entertainment, uh, entertainment industry in Hollywood. This is a possibility for you. There are a lot of industry partners our program faculty have um, built throughout the year that will help our students to go straight from this program into the different kind of uh, entertainment industry that's in the area. So that's another possibility for those of you who are interested in tapping into the AR VR experience and working with utilizing AR VR experience to connect with other disciplines. This is really something I'm, I've been talking about all along this morning. The new media and immersive experience center, we call it Mixed Center. This particular um, facility actually just opened this fall. And we also started our first group of students, as well as uh, two graduate programs in the building. So what is the next center? This is the outside. So the facade of the building, um, it's about 40,000 square foot, a little, uh, 40,000 square meters, because we use the meter system here. Um, the extern external uh, south side facing, you'll see, the 80 square feet diagonal uh, LED high resolution screen that is going to be used for public viewing. Uh, we're gonna do different kind of uh, movie or movie nights for the community members. And this particular building is equipped with future technology, fiber optic throughout the whole building, point to point. Also, network connectivity that allows the whole building to distribute audio and video files. And this building is really designed with the idea of utilizing virtual production environment and utilizing AR, VR, extended reality technology to help our future game designers, future film and media production makers, future design thinkers to see how they can utilize advanced technology to build different kinds of, for world buildings, essentially, right? So this is basically a place where you can, whatever you can imagine, and you can think about how AR, VR experiences that can help you to make that happen. So this is, this particular facility though, is truly made for that immersive media experiences. And so our goal is to be able to continue to offer classes and programs to uh, public as well as students so that whatever they're producing, there's always, well, it's always with the idea of public facing and community engagement. This building is an investment from the Mesa City residents as well as ASU. So we have that responsibility to make sure that whatever educational programs that we're offering through this program benefit the community members as well as the students that are in the program. So really quickly, I'm getting the sign. So just to give you a, a quick inside view of the space, the entire building is built like a Hollywood studio. Three stores, you can fly a drone inside the building, uh, inside the studio, uh, production studio. So I'm not gonna go over the possibilities within the screen, but I want to share with you some of the programs that we offer through the Mixed Center. So for those of you who are coming into graduate programs in two years, this will, or even next year, this is a great option for you to think about. So with that said, um, 
I would like to see if you have any questions about some of the programs that I quickly went through. But really, this is to kind of put together to help you to under to think about different kinds of transdisciplinary opportunities you can build on architecture. Right? You can do architecture with the economy major if you wanted to. That's a beautiful combination. What about architecture with landscape architecture? A, ve a very interesting combination. It's very uh, commonly combined. You can also go into architecture with interior architecture. I mean, that's also very closely related. Um, but you can go outside of architecture if you wanted to. So, any questions? Now, I have a question. Yes, question. Yeah, on the penultimate slide of your first presentation, uh, there was a course under research work heading which said uh, something within parenthesis it was written as experience design. Mm -hmm. I, I, would, uh, I would like to know what it is. Yes, thank you for asking that. Experience design is actually part of the um, immersed, the mixed center graduate program offering. It is helping students to uh, develop content that can be used specifically for AR, VR environment. So students with design background, architecture, industrial design, are perfect alignment for that particular degree program. And it's one of the new programs that are offered through the next Center. Thank you for asking that. And is there, a, is there any upper age limit for enrolling in any of these programs? If you want to learn, ASU the place is the place for you. You can come too. Is there, is there any discount for senior citizens? <laughs> Let me ask the president of the, the university. Maybe he may want that. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, two questions. One, the Center. Yes. That's the only. Uh, that is the the Herald Examiner building. Is it a It was a deliberate choice. I don't know all the details, but I think it was a, um, Asia was approached with the idea of renovating that historical space into uh, an educational unit as well as how we can utilize, uh, activate the space. Yes, it is a deliberate choice though. Okay. And second, uh, how much work is with the Center? Thank you for asking that. Biomimicry Center is part of the Herbert Institute, the design school. So we are, uh, the design school holds in that biomimicry. But um, there are other faculty members that have appointments outside the Herbert group, but part of the A2 sustainability. Many of our design faculty have joint appointment, uh, affiliation. So the biomimicry center I'm referring to is the only specifically the to the the one that's part of the. the I, I'm sorry. It's a host within the design school, but then it's also a partner with other ASU units. But how that connects with outside the ASU, I really don't have the history. I, I don't have the. History. But it is a national connection. I'm going to take your word for it because you probably know more than I do. But I do know that it's not, um, uh, we don't own it. It's just part of, yeah. Does that clarify? So, um, sorry. Yeah. It's a certificate, biomimicry certificate. That's not part of the design degrees, then. It might be a research project that's part of the biomimicry. I can give you more information about biomimicry unless you know one of our faculty. That's all right. All right. Thank you for the question. Okay. So I know I have a quiz for you. What are the five schools in the Herbert Institute? I told you I was going to quiz you.
I gave you a free point. All right, who's your class representative? All right, the design school? School. Arts, media, and engineering. I don't remember that. What are the, the next three? Performing arts, you got a point, good. Film school, hey, you were listening, good job. And then what else? Arts, media, and engineering, we said that. Okay, you guys did great. Thank you so much for your attention. I know we had a little bit of a technology hiccup and I couldn't show you as many videos as I would like to, but I'm gonna share that with your faculty members so you, they can play with, play those videos for you because they are way more interesting than I can ever imagine. Thank you so much.